Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to split data into separate rows with Power Query. Now, I'll show you two examples. One where we're going to split by columns or commas and the other one where we're going to split, split by special characters. So the one we're going to split by commas, here's an example that we might get where we've got two columns. One, we've got this category of uh, items and here we have the SKU and you can see that we have a SKU-quantity and they're split by commas. So we have this first SKU, this uh, alphanumeric number SKU, and a dash nine. So there's nine of these items of these SKUs, and there's nine of these other SKUs that end in 8, 11, 11, and so on with the other ones here. We got 11, we've got two here, and we got one. And we want to have something where we can total the amount of the quantity based on the category, for example. So we have a category here, and we've got 81 of uh, these particular uh, skews in this category or maybe we want something where we want to keep that second column but also have a grand total now this is not very easy to do if you have a lot of rows of data right because if you have a little bit you can just say oh and these are all nines or it, they're pretty easy right you can just count the number of dashes and just multiply by nine but if there was like eight six ten how would you add them all up I'll show you how to do it with Power Query. Now this is done with commas. What if we had no commas and it was a special character, a line break, and it's not readily apparent what is separating these SKUs. I'll show you how to do this one too. But basically we want the same output here, right? Either in it by itself or the grand total. So let's start with the first example where we've got commas. We have our data here. If we have Power Query, this is on Excel 2019 or Excel um, Office 365, similar. The Power Query option is already there. If you have previous versions of Excel, you might need to kind of find out if you need to install it and enable it. But if you have Office 365 or Excel 2016 or 19, it is in there already. So just depending on uh, which version you have, you probably need to kind of look and see where you have it. But for 2019 or Office 365, Excel Power Query is in the Data tab. So under Data, we're going to say Get from Table or Range. And what happens is it's going to turn this range of data into a table. So if I go click that, it's going to automatically sense the boundaries of my data. And I have my rows here on our, our headers here. This row is the first header. Uh, the header row and I'll click OK it turns it into a table and it's going to bring it into the Power Query editor. Resize this a little bit so it'll fit and we have our data here. What I like to do is we open up this query pane and this is the table I'll just call this I'll give this the the raw data I'll just call this raw data raw data and this is with the assumption that maybe in the future this data is going to be added to so it's going to be an increasing table and I'm going to reference this data so now you see there's a title for that table go to right click and what we're going to do is we're going to reference this table and so what it's going to do is if we have changes in this data the next query whatever changes we happen to happen in this table it's going to flow down to this when we eventually have additional output so what I want to do is I want to split this data, split it from the commas. Click on this. You can go to split column here or just right click and go split column. And we want to split by delimiter. And of course our delimiter is a comma. Select comma here. And under advanced options, we want to split into rows. So we want to have each row for each of the SKU dash quantities. After I click OK, you'll notice now it's done that and it's kept the ca category. So there were several of these under GB-INV and several under AC-INV, right? To further along, what we want to do is we also want to split the nine out. We want to get the quantity out so we can total it. So it's a split again, right click, go to split by column, split by delimiter, and we want to split by that dash. I did this earlier, so Excel was kind enough to remember what I did, but what we need to do is there they have a couple options here colon comma equal sign semicolon space tab or custom which 
you can type in your own character, which in this case is a dash. We don't need to go under advanced options because by default it splits it into row columns. So all we need to do is just click OK and it's going to split it up into columns. You can see we have our numbers there. And this could be the first example where I had where I just wanted the category and the SKU, right? So I'm going to call this just a, a simple table, simple table, right? So I'll get rid of the this particular SKU quantity, right click, remove, and I need to add this all together. So I'm going to group this category. So select on the category uh, column and either click group by or right click. There's also a group by option here and we want to group by the category and our new column we're going to call that I'll just call that grand total and we want to sum up the quantity so we're going to sum it we don't want to count it by default it does a count but we want to sum up this quantity column add all those nines together for this first category ID click OK and, and of course for the other ones click OK and now they've all summed up so it summed up all those SKUs for that category, summed up all those SKUs for that category, and the same here. Now I can just click close and load. By default, it's going to uh, close and load into a new worksheet. But if you didn't want it to load into a new worksheet, you can tell it where you want it to load it. But now you can see it's loaded it there. Right? So I have that option. What if I wanted something like this? I wanted to kind of retain this and just add a grand total there. Well, we can do that too. I'm going to go back into my queries, go under data. Oops, let's go back into my, uh, let's click on data. Go to, since I clicked in my table here, which is the result of a query, you can see that my table tools or my query tools show up. I just want to get in my query and maybe edit. And let's see what it shows me. It uh, gives me the query window. I'm going to open up my query pane here and do the same thing where I did earlier here. I want to reference this. So I'm going to click reference. Let's call this one full table. This is going to be the bigger table. Full table. Right? And I wanted to have it where I still, I still retain the category here. I retain this, but I had a total here. And what we can do is we can pull in the data from here into this full table here. And what we can do is merge the queries. So merge is almost like you're going to perform a lookup. And we want to do a lookup on these values here in the category. So I'll just click on merge queries. I don't need to do it as a new query because I'm just going to modify this particular query. Go into merge queries and it's going to have a merge selection. The merge window will come up where I can select the items that I want to manage to, to use to create my merge table. This is a table that's here. And which table do I want to merge it with? I want to merge it with that simple table. So I'll select the simple table. And what are the columns that we want to see uh, merged So or looked up? So this is the table with this column. I want to look it up with the, this table and this column with values in there. And it's going to bring back uh, these two columns. Click OK. And you can see here you got a table here or table um, column. If I clicked on a, the, the outside here, you can see this particular cell, it represents that category and that total, which is what it looked up. And you can see here, it also did the same for AC in, and also gave me back that total, which is coming from that simple table. I can just expand it and uh, uncheck this because I don't want to, I want, I want to use I don't want to use the original name as a prefix, so I'll have simple table dot and then dot category or simple table dot grand total. I just want to have the values here for the header. And I don't need the category anymore because category shows up here. I just want the grand total. Click OK. And now we have a grand total here. And I can just bring this back into my new worksheet, or I can click close and load, and it's going to bring it and give me another worksheet here and we have our three columns our category our SKU dash quantity and also our grand total one thing it didn't do is didn't do a word wrap so I can just click on that go to home and word wrap it and you can see all the other data here that shows up and that is this particular output
right? And so that is what we can do for the, let me go back to the sheet where, here we're back on a sheet where it had it, and let's see what sheet one was. Oh, sheet one was this raw data. If we didn't want this to show up as a separate worksheet, we can have it loaded into memory. So you just right click, go to load to, and instead of having a table on a worksheet, we just want to create a connection. It will just have the connection in memory. It won't load it as a separate worksheet. When I click OK and click OK, it's gone here. So it's loaded. It's still there, but it's not loading it as a worksheet here. Right? So I'll right click that and just delete it. I don't need that anymore. All right? And so I've got my two different examples, my output here with just the simple table, which is sheet two here, and with this more full table, that's sheet three. Now, what if we didn't have commas? What if we had some special characters? And we had this example where, oops, let me go. We had this example where it's a line break. Now, this is a line break that's probably done in the system or maybe someone press Alt Enter to do the line breaks for all these. If you have that case, you can still do it. And you just need to have a, you just need to go to the different dropdown. So this one is, Example two here, I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier. Go to data and get from table. Excel smart enough to figure out where the range is. My table has headers, click OK. And what I can do now, I'll just call this, I'll call this raw number two. Raw table number two. And this is going to be that query. Let me open this up. All right, we have raw table. Uh, I think maybe it was raw data. We'll call it raw data number two. Be a little consistent. Raw data number two. Press tab. Now it shows up. Raw data number two. And this one is going to close close and load. I'll select the second option so I can select where I want to close and load it to. I just want a connection. At first, the, the first one I did, I clicked it as a table, so it loaded as a table. But let's do this as only connection. Click OK. Now I will go back, right click, edit, brings back the query editor. Let's open up this pane. And we want to do what we did earlier and use this as a reference. Right click and go to reference. And this one, we also want to do the same thing where we added everything here. So we're going to split it. Click on the header here. I'm going to use the split column here so you can see the other example instead of right clicking here. If we do it by delimiter, I can open up and we're going to have the delimiter. You can see that it doesn't show up as a line feed. But if we go into custom and we, we're going to say split every occurrence of the delimiter because there's a couple delimiters there. Click on the advanced option. We go to rows and we're going to say split using special characters because a line break is or a line feed is a special character. Click on that. And you see now we have some different op options where we have tab, we have a carriage return, line feed, non-carriage return, non-breaking space. These are those special characters that don't really show up easily in Excel, but you, have, you can choose some of the options. I know this is a line feed because um, I set it up as a line feed. In your case, you might want to see if, if you have a carriage return or a tab, you can you choose those. I click on line feed, click OK, and it's done the same thing that it's done earlier when we separate it by comma. Right, so it recognized those line feeds and separated it. And here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to separate the nines. I'm going to go split column by delimiter. The, the dash is there, so we're going to split that by column. We don't need to click this drop down because we don't need to do it by row anymore. We're going to add another column for that nine. And all we need to do is get rid of this now, right click and click remove. And we need to group this. Right? We want to group all the GB dash INVs and all the AC dash INVs. So click group by and we're going to group by the category. This will be the total. We want to sum it. We want to sum it by the SKU quantity 2. Click OK. And now we have the same thing we had earlier. Only difference here is we had line feeds instead of commas. I'll go and click on that, close and load. It's going to be a new worksheet. It's going to be sheet 4 here. And that's where we have that there. We can do the same thing if we wanted to have the example where we had this. Same thing. Now I could I could go here 
and go to data, uh, queries and connections, or I can just right click on any one of these, right click and click edit, and you'll see that the query Power Query Editor shows up. I just need to oh, expand that out and do the same thing I did earlier. Reference my raw data tab, right click, click reference, and merge with that one. Same thing I did earlier. Do merge queries, merge queries here, and we selected our category here. I want to merge it with raw data number two, and merge, and click on the category that I want to merge it with. This is basically almost a lookup. Click OK, and we have our table here. You can see if I click inside, oh, oops, I think I forgot a step. Let's quit this. Do you want to keep your changes? Let's discard everything. And let me see what happened here. Right click, edit, raw data number two. Oh, let me, let me call this one. Let me call this simple, simple table number two. Simple, so we know what it is. Simple table number two. Click uh, close and load. Now we have simple table number two. Let's click on raw data number two, right click, uh, ref, uh, edit. We can also do reference here too. We do not need to bring up the edit and then go into the query editor. We can actually reference here, do the same thing. It's going to bring up the query editor and also reference it. Right? And so we are going to call this something else. This is going to be the full table. Full table number two. And here we're going to merge it, right? Like we did earlier. We're going to merge our queries and merge the category with our simple table number two and click on that category click OK and you can see as we clicked inside we have our totals and the category same thing with that one if we expand it out here we don't want to add use the original column name as a prefix and all we needed was the total click OK and now you see we have our total here and we've got our existing skew dash quantity with the line feeds, but now we just have a total amount. I click close and load, and it brings it into a new sheet here. Right? I had mentioned that using Power Query, the nice thing about it is if you had updates to your source table, all you need to do is make a one button, almost like a one button click, and it will refresh your other tables. So let's see how that works. I'll go to example one here. And let's say I added something. I will add a comma, and then let's make up some skew, right? And then we'll do dash one, right? So that added that. And let's add another category here. Let's make this category F. We'll just make something up dash INV, and we'll make some other some other skew. Just make up something dash one. Right, and I want it to show up here. So this should this should have one, two now, and the new one should have one. And it would do the same thing here in sheet three. All I need to do now is just go under data, refresh all. It refreshed everything, but when I look at sheet two, you notice now there's this weird skew for T B I N V, and also this weird skew for F T I N V. Right, so F T I N V, T B I N V. There's two now. And FT, INV, there's one. And if I go to sheet three, you notice that the changes are there. Two and one for those weird skews. And this is the nice thing about using Power Queries because now you can edit it. You can add in, anything into your source table, right? And all you need to do is just click Refresh All, and it will refresh your eventual output tables, depending on which one you do. It will do the same thing for the Line Phoenix line feed example here and all you need to do is just set it up correctly and you have almost a one click facility or way to update your output so that's the way that we can split data into separate rows we either doing it by something like commas or by special characters i hope that helps thanks for watching